and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanso, and joining me today is Silver Quill. And my voice is still the most luxurious, but Norman, I'm, I'm a little extra worried about you today. It's all good, man. It's all good. Um, one, one downside about my voice right now is I can't go high, so I just got to go low. Low. So you gotta, you gotta get your, your Barry Manilow going. Go. Oh yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the NBA show, baby. Gotta get it on. Exactly. <laughs> also joining <laughs> us today is Jacob. Hello everybody. <laughs> this break was, oof, long. Very too long than desired, but considering things that are right now, <laughs> maybe this should have been a bit longer, but... Well, I think uh, it's better that way. Yeah, man. I, I mean, as much as I hate to put uh, the quote-unquote breaks on the podcast, um, <laughs> somehow, technically, I kind of need it, but it's been too long, man. For too long, I have endured this silence. Now my voice must ring out. Yep. <laughs> So anywho, the world was tremble before me. <laughs> tremble, I say. Oh no! Uh, nope, can't go high. <laughs> oh. Actually, that would be hilarious if a villain tries to come to the world and only baritones respond. <laughs> Where, where's the high pitched screaming? Oh <laughs> uh, no, no, that's not what I mean. Oh god! <laughs> Talking about screaming, um, in today's episode review, we are going to review the. I got no idea how they flip this around, but it's the My Little Pony crossover with Transformers 2. Um, the magic of Cybertron. Um, in this issue, uh, sorry, we're going to review issue number one. In this issue, the Decepticons attempt to bring Equestrian magic into Cybertron and end up unleashing a powerful force of evil that threatens their world. So, uh, first impressions are in order. Silver. Oh, well, you know, I, as a fan of both uh, G1 Transformers and G4 <laughs> My Little Pony, this is a dream come true. Although I should say this is actually a Transformers, uh, what is it called? Transformers Universe, as it features several characters from different continuities. But... This is this is pure fun. I am just going to enjoy the ride of all the all the ponies on a world uh, scaled far far larger than uh, they're used to. All right, all right. Um. <coughs> Jacob, what about you, man? Well, let's just say that I have several questions. And leave it at that. <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, S- Only several will be done in no time. It'll <laughs> be quick. Oh no. Oh, man. And as for me, um, this this crossover special is rather interesting. I I, I like what they did with it. Um, like you mentioned before, Silver. Uh, this is the. Transformers universe crossover instead of the Pony universe crossover, but to me, it's just like part two of the same thing. It's fun. It's entertaining. It's silly. It's 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 a lot of things that Transformers shouldn't be doing, but they're doing it, and it works. Well, this sequel actually. I, the the wording, the phrasing, or the titling that they do, it's kind of like what when Silver mentioned. Uh, this is the Transformers universe crossover instead of the blah 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 blah. Well, the, the magic of Cybertron, a blotted husk of a world de- demolished by millions of years of war. It's magical. <laughs> oh wow! It's full of destruction. <laughs> That's new. <laughs> oh boy. So, anywho, uh, if you guys have not read this comic yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the comic. So, we're gonna start off with, well, 
a rather simple introduction where we see a two-panel comic spread of a goblin and a pony. Um, they're kind of how how do I put this? This is the simplest way to uh, portray a pony comic. Oh, you're 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 making you're gonna make me cry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, the, this two panel spread just is just a lot of fun, and we see um some bots, uh, frenzy and do we uh, breakdown? Uh, no, frenzy. Uh, it's frenzy, right? Yeah, it's frenzy. Yeah, frenzy yeah, it's frenzy. Breakdown. Oh. Oh, uh, so yeah, that's breakdown, and I guess it depends on who you're saying. I, I will, through my dying breath, defend that that color scheme is rumble. Rumble. Wait, but isn't rumble? Rumble. Gosh. Wait, doesn't rumble have the pilot driver hands? He does. In the cartoon, that color scheme was rumble, but the toys flipped it with his twin frenzy. <laughs> Oh, man. So Frenzy is uh, supposed to be black and red. I remember that. Kind of. So I I, I went on a tirade about this back when uh, <laughs> Fluttershy met Soundwave, which sounds like a romantic movie. But hold the- on, I'm wa- hold on, I'm seeing the wiki now, and it says uh, I'm seeing Rumble, but he's black and red. Yeah, I, uh, and it's G one. Yes, it's G one. That's G1. See. This is why it's so blood, bloody confusing. The cartoon and the toys didn't sync up on this one. But by God, as a G1 cartoon watcher, I will defend that that is Rumble. But Oh, it, yeah, now I see it. The cartoon, yeah. Yeah, okay, now I see it. But, but wouldn't that is. mean, Silver, uh, would, wouldn't they try and kind of synchronize everything in the uh, reboot? Which one? I think there's like a dozen reboots of Transformers. You've got, let's see here, you've got Armada, which led into Energon, and then they rebooted with uh, Galaxy, or Cybertron as they call it. Then there's Cyberverse, then there's Prime. You see, we can go on. Yep. I could go on for a while listing all the various Transformers oh, series out there. Any. But this. <laughs> Okay. But this is a Generations comic for uh, Breakdown was from Prime, and this Rumble Turned Frenzy is f- supposed to be G1. Hmm. <coughs> I have a lot of questions when it comes to the design later on, but carrying on. So, um, I- I'm just going to call him what I see the book calls him, Silver. Uh, y- you-, you can do the same thing if you want. So, anywho... Um, Frenzy's reading a comic book that he got from Equestria and he's enjoying it even though the story is a bit silly and dumb. And uh, Breakdown here is kind of not really making fun of him but it's just like, um, wait, you're reading that uh, silly comic? And um, Frenzy here is just wholeheartedly defending his fandom. <laughs> That's how... Um, I see it. He he is a he's a brony. Oh no! <laughs> I, know, I see it more as he's just desperate for something fun in the middle, and even says, "Take <coughs> Primus, their god. Forbid we ever take a break from the endless war to appreciate a little beauty or just plain happiness." Oh, yeah. It's like, oh my god, that is a cry for help. <laughs> that, that is also true. And um, breakdown here says, "Oh, okay, um, Tachi." Uh, maybe can I borrow it when you're done? So that that's kind of cool. And we we see here Megatron say shut up because we have work to do. Um <coughs> Who's this? Um oh man, it's been a while. Um Shockwave, yes. Shockwave is the thing done and how is everything going? And he tells Megatron that, um, yeah, magic will be ours soon. And we cut to Equestria where we see <coughs> the Ever Free Forest. Um, there's Mind Wipe and Skull Crusher. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the 
line of auto uh, transformers where this not beast wars right uh nope these guys are from the headmaster line oh god that that confusing oh yeah that that confusing story uh, hmm, which one if you're oh man uh the Inkara from Atop the Fourth Wall did a really good retrospective of the whole comic, um, the whole Marvel comic line of Transformers, and they included the um, uh, Headmasters. And oh my god, that 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 setup is just oh my god. Anyway, moving on. Well, you should you should see the confusion if you have season four of the American Transformers, which was only four episodes. Oh man, three. Four or five, and then Japan did a whole series on just the headmasters. I, I remember that. I, I remember the Jap- Japanese version, and I think they um, dub it in English. Not that I'm aware. There have been fan dubs on YouTube. Not sure. I, I saw that when I was a kid, and I bought the uh, figure. Um, it was. I'm, I'm trying to remember here because uh, I got Optimus Prime. And you can put some kind of mini mini person in front of ah you had you had a power master. See, it's just keep, they just keep coming up with more and more terms. Yep. Anywho, carrying on, carrying on. So uh, we we see them in the Empire Forest, and uh, I find it very fascinating where we see a a uh, crocodile and bats. And we have those Transformers too. Uh, you would have thought that, oh, they're kind of scanning the area and transforming into the local life. But nah, nah. Somehow Transformers got alligators and bats beforehand. Hmm. Anywho, uh, well, they probably just scan similar items. Like, hey, you look like me. I'm going to kidnap you. <laughs> I don't know. So, anywho, we go to the Crystal Mountains and we see Shadow Stalker and Arachnid. So, wait, Arachnid? It's a, it's a helicopter? Yes. She's spider themed, but what to do with all those legs? Well, turn it into a uh, propeller. So, wait, um, oh god, my, my head is spinning with this one. Oh, sorry. Uh, Arachnid is from Transformers Prime, and Shadow Striker from is from Cyberverse. No, no, no. I, I'm just, I'm just really confused with Arachnid because uh, she's from, not the uh, what do you call it the from the Beast Wars. No, no, no not, not nope. even that. <laughs> like, With, sorry, she's Sky Spider. Would that be an easier way to think of her? No, no, no. Because from what I remember of Arachnid, uh, she was Archie. Then corrupted into Arachnid, and now she's uh, th- she's just pissed off, and then like, kind of. Oh. Like I mentioned. Oh, Norman, can can I shatter your perception? Yes, please. You're thinking of uh, Black Arachnia from Transformers Animated, and this is a completely different character, but with a similar spider theme from Prime. Yep. Uh, Dude, I'm sorry. You're dealing with decades of I know. Uh, Transformers here. I know. And it's one of those things where I get it. They wanted to sell toys. And this is the closest way to do it. <laughs> well, then to avoid the messy continuity of, hmm, should we go meet the Transformers before the massive slaughter of the 1985 movie? Or after, oh. when everybody kind of hated the new Transformers. Yeah. Oh, man. At least Hot Rod. Oh. Rodimus. Hot Rod is not bad. Oh, God. My voice can't go high. I, I like Hot Rod. Hot Rod is cool. But, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Anywho, carrying on. They, they scanned stuff, and they found some kind of magical crystal some kind of power source so i'm gonna stop here for a bit so what do you guys think of the story so far silver 
Oh, well, it, for me, it's been a game of Spot the Cybertronian. And as you can tell, I know the series pretty well. So I recognize who this is this and that's that. So, I mean, that's all we've got thus far is quick, is quick little Decepticon homages. I feel like I should be saying, who's that Decepticon? <laughs> it's Arachnid. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. Oh God, yeah. yeah, kind of, yeah. But mostly I've been hearing Norman break as he tries to figure out who's who and what's what. Yeah, I I mean... I, okay. And you're breaking his sanity, so... Right? <laughs> yeah, usually I have to be like several sound buttons in for this level of confusion. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not a huge massive Transformers fan, but I'm casual. But even the casual in me is trying to process, wait, what? Who? What now? The, the, the Decepticon cars out the window. So... The, well, the, the Decepticon cars has windows. Uh, and Corinthian leather. <laughs> oh, man. But what, you know what I mean. But uh, the unique ones, like the uh, Arachna and stuff, those I remember. But <laughs> adding details to stuff that my brain is slowly trying to comprehend is confusing. <laughs> oh, don't worry. You're going to get even more confused as we go on. I know. Uh, uh, uh. Anywho, Jacob, what about you, man? Story so far. Well, so far, so good. It's basically just the continuation of where the previous series left off, where uh, Shockwave basically said that they have sort of made a link to Equestria and they can just transport uh, energy from there to Cybertron. But after the when what I when Arachnid and Shadow Striker find that uh, Shadow Crystal in the Crystal Mountains, beyond that point, let's just say that I'm gonna have questions that uh, I got problems with. Oh, all right, all right. So, anywho, uh, let's carry on. We head to Los Pegasus, where we see the band DJ Pontry and Octavia are jamming out. <coughs> Sorry. Let's just call her Final Scratch. I just can't. That name's so stupid, come on. <laughs> it's a stage name, man. But, anywho. Uh, they perform on stage. They, they we have recolored, not really recolored. Like we we have a unicorn rainbow dash. We have a male Lyra and so on. And then we see the Sky Patrol coming in. Oh no! Um, Starscream and his gang are terrorizing the ponies. And yeah, who's there to stop them? But the main six plus dragon. And yeah, uh, th- seven. Seven. Where, where's sun? Uh, where's sunset? Isn't Spike the, the part of um, part of the group now? Technically, nah, man, it's Spike. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, I, I forgot. I'm sorry. That. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, the main six <laughs> plus Applejack. <laughs> oh, that's harsh. <laughs> No, I mean, you're doing, you're doing Applejack dirty. <laughs> I know. So, anywho, they're, they're going to well, open a can of whoop ass. And we hit to Cloudsdale where the... <laughs> uh, well, before you go ahead, can I just say something else? Well, I think that in the previous page, the car is messed up a little bit in regards to Rainbow Dash's mane. Because you notice that there's about half of the colors missing in her mane. God. Well, that's why it's actually her her non identical cousin Bo Dash. <laughs> uh, what about her uh, second cousin twice removed? That's apparently an Earth Pony, the one that's in the that? the panels above it. Oh, the unicorn! They, we we don't talk about her. <laughs> yeah, I think the artist got a bit confused. Uh, no, the color has got a bit confused. It's well, the mains look a bit uh, too the, um, too close to one another, and the, the same problem with the color and colors becomes uh, well noticeable a bit later when Rarity's magic is purple like Twilight's instead of light blue. 
Oh yeah, but but anyway, your who, turn. Who who drew the, uh, yeah, who who drew that comic? Uh, Let's see here. Art, Jack, Art, Lawrence. Art, Jack, Jack Lawrence. Yeah, Jack Lawrence. Yeah. And the writers James. Oh, but the, co- but the colors were by Luis Antonio Delgado. Uh, yeah. So, which sounds like a really cool name. Ri- Either which way, Luis Antonio Delgado. So basically, um, non-pony um, artist slash colorist. Hey, but still, um, they look good. Yeah, the colors are good. So anywho, carrying on, um, we see Klausdale, the Wonder Balls practicing, and suddenly portals open, and oh, pff, dumb pony go in, dumb pony get captured. All of them are dumb ponies, but I I regret that Soren is the one who initiates this stupidity. But why? Oh, Soren, why? Why would you do that? After all the character development you had... Oh, no, wait, that's uh, that's Silver Story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, honestly, I'm thinking this is like a bizarro Soren... And so you die, Spitfire. We all move up in rank. Oh, <laughs> uh, not even that. So, anywho, um, they, they they get captured, and we see um, Arachnid here and Shadow Strike. Shadow Striker just brings in the crystal, and we see that Starscream is. Okay, I, I'm I'm curious here. Did they really carry the stage into the portal? <laughs> they well, you know, Starscream likes to be a, a scene stealer. They did. What? Why? Why would they do that? Exit stage left takes on a different meaning. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand this. Why? <laughs> this is dumb on a whole new level, even for Starscream. And um, rumble, no, not not rumble. Oh, frenzy. frenzy, frenzy, yeah, frenzy here just says, "Oh, for Primus' sake!" Like, yeah, I'm with frenzy here. Like, wait, what? <laughs> we knew someone was gonna screw up. Might as well be star screen. <laughs> yep. <coughs> oh man, this is just. Dumb. Like, what? Starscream, what? Why? Yeah, but is it his fault when it was basically Thundercracker that just came uh, rushing in all boisterous and loud? Hmm. With the message, we will, ret- <laughs> we will return after these <laughs> messages, which even that conjures memories. Oh, boys. <laughs> Hang on, I'm swept up in nostalgia. <laughs> but anywho, as they come in, we see the main six uh, pop in and try to do a lot of damage or try to stop the Decepticons. And Twilight blasts her uh, magic laser blast and hits the crystal. And when the crystal cracks open... We see a lot of bad things going on, and uh, we see some kind of shadowy figure, and the shape looks like Unicron. Oh no, that's bad. He's expensive. Oh yeah, the Haslab exclusive, it's what, over at least a thousand? I think so. It's scary huge, by the way. <coughs> Let's see here. I'm just doing a quick search online to see how much it goes for right now. Oh! Well, you do that. I'll carry on. So. Well, for. Oh, 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 this is fantastic. On eBay, $2,999.99. So basically, it's 3000 then. Uh, plus shipping. Ah. Uh, and tax. Don't forget the tax. Oh uh, boy, so so anywho, um, as the shadowy figure comes out, we see the uh, Optobots notice this and head towards the smoke. 
because something smoky is not great. And before we see uh, Unicron, or it is revealed to us that it is not Unicron, but King Sombrero. He is. Aha! He is there, and Twilight just says, "Oh no, we destroy you." And Sombrero just says, "You merely uh, dispel me, mystical ashes, blah blah blah, to the wind. I I got better." So. How? Like Summer was reduced. Uh, sorry. Summer was reduced to cosmic dust in the beginning of the end. So how does it make sense for his ashes to have been taken all the way to the Crystal Empire? I mean, it would have been. It would have made much more sense if it was well, basically his horn that became a crystal formation at the end. Well. You, you know how it uh, ended with the Crystal Empire, where he basically exploded and bits and pieces of him flew, uh, well, into the frozen waste. Well, since the Siege of, crystal, the Siege of the Crystal Empire is not canon, they could have just gone with that. This just makes it seem so far-fetched, honestly. <laughs> yeah, the true... Or you could just say this is another sombrero riding around with her girlfriend, his girlfriend... <laughs> Uh, boy so anywho uh, Sombrero here just says since your combined magical friendship power uh, stopped me I'm gonna take that away before you get a chance to do damage and he managed to get three out of the six and those three are Twilight Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie so leaving up uh, sorry leaving Rainbow Dash Rarity and Applejack and Spike, I don't who see strangely th- disappears after he comes through the portal. Yep, yep, yep. But anywho, um, Sombrero gathers the ponies and sees that, huh, I got new friends. Let's see if my power works on them. Surprisingly, it does. It does work on robots. Oh, who knew? So, um... <coughs> Shockwave here uh, sees that, oh, uh, the these ponies have mind control. Uh, Lord Megatron, what are your orders? And Megatron here just blasts uh, Shockwave in the chest and says, All hail Sombrero! And yeah, that's not great. That's not great. So, Som- Sombrero commands the mind control creatures to get out of there for a bit so yeah they, they fly off I don't know how Pinkie Pie is flying I do know that the Decepticons can fly without wings which is strange yeah this brings up even more questions <laughs> I'm gonna pause here so Jacob what do you think yeah well <laughs> Well, this is the the first thing in this series that makes it abundantly clear that this entire crossroad, including the previous one, is outside of the... Hold on, let me just spell this correctly. C-O-N-T-I-N-U-I-T-Y What does that spell? Continuity. And there he said it. You can't can't (laughs) cash me out on this one. (laughs) Anyway, well... I mean, first it was Chrysalis returning, and there are apparently changelings that weren't reformed, which makes very little sense. I mean, sure, uh, it was said that we said previously that in the ending of season 10 it was showed that Chrysalis was slowly breaking out, but considering that the first issue of Friendship mm-hmm. in Disguise came out like two months before the first issue of season 10 was released. And even then, it would have been uh, at least a year and a half before the final issue was released. So that alone is questionable. Like That's especially noticeable when we have another Spike in Grimlock's story later down the line. And Spike says that he can barely do things that he should have already mastered based on the TV series. <laughs> so, yeah... I'm totally on Quibble Pants' side uh, from the very first issue of the last series when it comes to 
C O N T I N U I T Y. What's that? Continuity bump. <laughs> there. Oh, man. So yeah, it makes perfect sense. Now it makes perfect sense why <laughs> apparently Spike doesn't fly in the pre- in the issue with Grimlock and uh, and him. Hmm. All right. Anyway, go on. Silver, what about you, man? Okay. Well, we've got Sombra coming back, and I think the oddest panel for me is when you see Ratchet working on Sludge, and he's pointing, saying, "Is that Unicron?" And he's pointing the wrong way. The window was behind him. I am, He's pointing at me, the audience. I am not Unicron. Uh, I, I'm going to defend this by saying that that could be a mirror. Yeah, I was about to say that too. <laughs> he's pointing at the reflection like of the mirror. Looks like a window to me. I mean, that's true. Um, but the, the way that I interpret this is that uh, it's a reflection of the back of the ponies. Oh, sorry, ponies. I mean, back of the robots, and it's showing uh, <coughs> the fourth wall is the mirror. So. Yeah, but technically, this is I'm kind d- of this. This is a very interesting way of doing a panel because uh, we who was it again? Uh, sludge. Yeah, a ratchet and sludge. Yeah. Um, sludge here pointing at the audience saying that is that Unicron while we have a background showing does seem like oh that's wrong but once you uh, internalize and visualize that hey there's a mirror behind them and the window is out there it makes a lot of sense for me I feel like all you need to do is have the shadow of this uh, evil shape falling over them and and that gives a better context. Because as it is, it looks like they're they're looking away from the window and add a, maybe add a mirror or something. I lose track after a while. But they're all they're also playing who's that transformer? <laughs> is that Unicron? Da-na-na. No, it's Sombra. Who the hell's that? <laughs> oh, Sombra. It's just a pony who likes to throw shade. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> now, on a slightly more serious note, I think it's a mistake to have Megatron under Sombra Brain Control. Uh, for here's the thing about Megatron: he one, especially the IDW, IDW comics, he's a massive guard of the sanctity of his mind. It's in, at times he says that's all he really has. And he is terrified of anyone messing with his brain, which when he semi-reforms, he's at odds with a a neurosurgeon. I believe he's called a memneosurgeon, Autobots. He's like, keep away from me. So having him fall under Sombra's sway feels like that undermines it a while undermines it quite a bit. And let's face it, Starscream would, would want to capitalize. Oh, there's no way to save them. We have to destroy them. So he'd be trying to take down Megatron. Now, if Optimus is under uh, Sombra's control, the Autobots have a vested interest in helping out. Uh, and Megatron has a begrudging reason to help out. Hmm. Because, one, no one gets to defeat Optimus Prime except him. So I feel like this this part is a misstep. Mm. At least to Megatron's character. And, indeed, some of the characteristics of other Decepticons. Also, why is Pinkie Pie flying? I figure uh, either Sombra or Twilight could supply the magic to lift her up. Yeah, I, I guess. Or is Pinkie Pie? She could just be like spinning her tail real fast. It, we, we don't question Pinkie Pie, but yeah, um, I, I do understand what um, I, I do get what you mean, Silver, with Megatron. But how would I put this? Um, in terms of character development or character story or character just just character in general, yes, it does suck that they did this to Megatron. But in terms of the story that we're reading now. 
it feels like having Megatron be mind controlled by Sombra kind of shows how dangerous and powerful Sombra is. And having one of your quote unquote top bad guys uh, on your side is really uh, scary. Like he like in this panel one panel alone, we see that he's in control of Megatron and Twilight, two powerhouse characters that can basically destroy stuff with their mind. My brain. <laughs> so yeah, um in terms of story, this is scary. But in terms of uh character development and whatnot, yeah, it is it sucks. It sucks. Well, I, I guess there's also a question. If you had taken Optimus, would that have been as threatening? I don't know, man. Like, honestly speaking, if they took... Op uh, if Sombra got Optimus instead of Megatron... Megatron... I, I feel like Megatron wouldn't really care that much. Like, in terms of this story, because there's no added weight to the scenario. Like, oh, he's just mind control. <coughs> no, my problem. Well, it's a, we're going to we're going to talk about Megatron and Optimus's relationship at the end of this series. Cool, cool. Can't wait. Can't wait. <coughs> Anywho, let's. I can promise. Oh. So, but I don't know. I think this is a very good setup and start. The Autobots are late to the party, but you know, they'll make up for it. Mm -hmm. Anywho, well. <coughs> Sorry. Anywho, the Autobots comes in and they're a bit too late, and they're surprised to see the ponies here. And uh, Prime just asks Shockwave, "What what what have you done?" And we see we see here that the ponies just give a straight answer, like um, they brought. They really underestimate how dangerous equation magic can be, and um, <coughs> they release some kind of evil pony that can mind control ponies and robots. So yeah, th th this sucks. And just looking at the explanation and breakdown, or just recap. It's fun. Uh, one thing I just love here is that Rainbow Dash just pushes Prime and Applejack just pushes Shockwave together. Like, now kiss. Stop with the shipping! <laughs> oh, boy. <coughs> and So, yes, welcome to the subsection Shipping is Magic. Okay. And I just love that Rarity says the only way to stop this is as friends as Starscream says we're doomed oh that's so true and that is the end for um, the intro what was it called again um, uh, the magic of Cybertron yes and now we hit into real mothers Oof, this is going to be rough yeah. This is going mm -hmm. to be rough. Why do you why do you say so? When we when we are introduced to the characters we'll 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 share. But anywho uh we see Ed Holiday and, and Lofty in Cybertron trying to save Scootaloo some <laughs> trying to save Scootaloo. Somehow she got transported there or kidnapped. And now they're looking for a way to save their niece. So as they try and figure out where Skurulu is, we are introduced to two awesome characters, um, Archie and Greenlight. RC. Uh, RC. RC. Oh. My bad. RC. <coughs> but anywho, um, the way that 
they're introduced here is that uh, Lofty and Holiday introduce themselves as uh, I'm Lofty, this is my gal Holiday and they're looking for Scootaloo and RC here just says I'm RC and this is my gal Greenlight and I, I remember what you mentioned a long time before Silver about robots and genders non-existent uh, yeah well, I would think so, but we've apparently established pronouns on Cybertron. I mean, it's... Uh, how, how do I put this? Like, maybe I'm not part of the fandom for the Transformers to this point where I get it. But at the same time, too, like, I understand why they want to do this. They want to include... They, they want to make include girls into the getting fandom. No, they, they they want to make people feel included, like inclusion. Yeah, that, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, diver- the, the dread di- of diversity and inclusion. You yeah, mean. yeah, that. And I'm all for it, but there's certain points where sometimes it feels forced. And in this scenario here, I'm not 100% sure if it's forced or part of the storyline. So, Silver, um, I'm, I'm guessing you know a lot about this one. Well, not as much as I'd like, but yes, I can fill in a little bit. So, after IDW finished their first run at the Transformers, they did a sort of reboot to the pre-war era. And uh, RC and Greenlight were already an item, but they were given a young protoform, a basically recently created Transformer, uh, to guide. And boy, that led to some adventures in and of itself. Uh, so really, with this story, yes, it's featuring same-sex couples, but it also it tries to draw parallels in that the couples are a study in opposites. Holiday and Lofty, I think we can we know from their introductory episode. One is leaner, uh, sharper, has sort of a biting sense of humor, and Holiday is rounder, shorter, and much more uh, gentle. One leaves healthy vegetables; the other leaves cookies. Yeah. It's very much the same with RC and Greenlight. Greenlight is a very scientifically minded Autobot and uh, does things a very analytical way, while RC is more emotional and approachable. And even in designs, you can see that while both are have leaner feminine figures, RC is more rounded than Greenlight. So it's sort of, in some ways, I feel like it's finding equivalence between the, the the very divergent species, similarities rather than differences. All right, all right. It, it is fascinating, it's fascinating. And, yeah, I mean, for them to be... For, for the comic to pair them this way, it's kind of cool. It, it's a really cool story. And in all honesty, uh, it doesn't really matter about... Uh... <coughs> Sorry. It doesn't really matter if you're a couple or not. It's just that uh, the interaction between the four of them is just kind of cool. So... Anywho, um, let's carry on. So, RC, yes, RC, and um, just ask, what are you doing here and whatnot? And uh, the ponies just explain that, yeah, we're looking for our niece. She's in here somehow. And RC just says, um, you guys better be careful because there's a big giant robot coming your way. And the robot is Killmaster. Huge. Killmaster? More like Hagrid bot. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> he's huge. He's huge. And. He's hulking and he's got a magic wand. God damn. 
So uh, this one is controlled by Sombra, and his real name is Murder King. What? <laughs> Silver, what's going on here? Alrighty, well we got an IDW comic exclusive character. Killmaster was originally known as Murder King, but he felt that really didn't describe what he was into. So he changed it. Oh, and, oh wow. So, uh, that's just... And his... That magic wand he is holding is, is really a teleportation device that traps uh, his opponents in pocket dimensions until he can uh, bring them out for, you know, a good a good killing, huh. which he has mastered. <laughs> you think that Killmaster to... was... You think that Killmaster was the best <laughs> equipped for containing Sombra at the moment's notice? But, well, maybe that's why Sombra brainwashed him right away. Huh. This OC do not steal character feels overpowered. Well, he is a high-ranking Decepticon who conveniently was not a part of the Earth Expedition. And his name is... Oh my god. Now I remember... Now, now I know the feeling. Like, this feeling that I have when looking at him. It's edgy. It's Edgelord. I... <laughs> so what? Uh, Transformers can have cringe too. Yep. I, I, I'm not saying that they can't, but yeah. Like, this is giving a shadow run for his money. Killmaster looks like it belongs in the Warhammer 40k universe. Yep. No, yep, he probably enjoyed that. <laughs> just, yeah. Oh, blood for the blood god. But anywho... Um, Kills for the Killmaster. Oh god, no. Oh. You mean Murder King. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> so, anywho... Um, the bots try to shoot um, Killmaster here, but... He somehow deflects the blast away. That's interesting. <laughs> and while he's distracted, the ponies tie him up with yarn. Oh no! The one weakness of yarn. Sorry, um, kill myself yarn. And lots of it. Oh no! Just kidding. He snaps it off and uh, is freed. But while... That happens, he gets sucker punch in the face. I think so. Did did he no? No No no, he got tapped he got tapped on the shoulder. Oh that was so confusing. Why? Because uh well apparently they take hold of the remainder of this yarn <laughs> and spin him around. Right round baby, right round. Like a record baby. Round round. Round, round. It seems that way. Anywho, um, green light here rides on RC. Um, lofty. Oh, please don't take that Ooh, down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you can interpret it that any way you want, my friends. Uh, so lofty throws yarn at Killmaster here, and um. Ties a bit of yarn at RC's antenna, see, and spins him right round, and they snip it, and he's blasting off again. Oh no! And once he's away, and uh, yeah, well, once he's away, danger's gone. Uh, we hear aunties need some help, and we are introduced to. The awesome crew, because we see Scootaloo riding on a scooter, I think, and joining her are Hot Rod and who, who are they, Silver? Well, let's see here. Even this one's a bit of a stretch for me as well because I believe Scootaloo is uh, driving Grindor. Gage is riding another motorcycle. Let's see here. Pardon me one sec while I rely on the Derpy Boru. They, it will tell me who's who and what's what. 
Let's see here. So, Scootaloo Hot Rod. <coughs> here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Female Philly. One, uh, I'm assuming the red motorcycle is Flare Up. Driving Flare Up is Gage. Then apparently one of these characters is called Hot Shot. And uh, Rubble. And Sure Shock. Um, so it's like... So basically a, a whole lot of mini cons, yeah. which... Mostly known for, I believe, the Transformers Armada. But as they only communicated in little beeps, like R2-D2, they they didn't have much personality. So, most of them are Minicons? I believe so. Huh. And I'll just also say the Scootaloo looks freaking adorable in the uh, movie I outfit. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Apparently, Scootaloo was never in any danger to begin with. Well, I have to assume that Hot Rod is acting as the group chauffeur. <laughs> I mean, honestly speaking, it feels like Hot, sorry, Hot Rod there is just like a preteen and he's just kind of chauffeuring them around. Like, oh, God, mom's going to kill me if I don't take care of you boys. Darn those kids with their scooters, their hot rods, their jeeps, and their dying highway surfing giving us a hard time. <laughs> oh boy. And, well, we, we see here that um, Lofty, Holiday, RC, and also Greenlight here just says, uh, we should have figured, uh, well then, uh, it seems the insurance are simu- similar everywhere. <laughs> and... It's true. That is true. And we see them playing around and whatnot. And uh, the ponies and robots are having a good time, having a picnic and whatnot. And comic ends. This, this is kind of cute. I'm just wondering, is the Minicons t- being taken care of by RC and Greenlight, like children? Well, I'm, I don't know about the Minicons. I know Gage is a protoform. So young, in fact, I'm not sure she's picked a alternate mode yet. Wait, isn't Gage the one with Pinkie Pie where they beat up? Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, yeah. But now, but this is Gage, so apparently that was a kid. Hmm. I. <coughs> <coughs> yep, <coughs> this is the the more you look into it, the more questions pops up. So let's don't look it up there and uh, let's look down. <laughs> uh so when you you're staring into the continuity and you blinked. Yep. So anywho, um, <laughs> they 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 have a good time. They have a play date and they well just 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 have a good time and comic ends and to be continued actually. So before we head into uh, ending the review or not, uh, let's see art because there's some really good arts here. Tony Fleece's art for the cover is really awesome. Uh, uh, Be- Be- Benny Mac- Mac- Bethany McGur Swift. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I I like the colors and and the price. And the price here is, how do I put this? The ponies are awesome. The robots are confusing. How so? <coughs> when you take a look, see at Optimus Prime. Uh, he's he he he's off model to say the least. And you see Jazz there, like there's some. The, the 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 way that any price draws the robots are just to me a bit off but he gives prime's uh shadow awesome yeah he he just is just awesome when he comes to drawing <laughs> 
Well, for some, uh, we're talking cover yeah, art. Yeah, yeah, just we? cover gallery. Okay. Because I was like, well, I thought he was very on model in the comic. Oh, never yeah, mind. I mean, just looking at this one, because the art is just awesome. And then I thought we'd just talk about it. And Anna Malakova? Mal 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 that, that one's just awesome. I, I just like this one. This, this one's just so cool. Oh no, Rainbow Dash is wearing Starscream's crown. Yep. And Bad things happen when, she, when he wears that crown. <laughs> uh, and just what? Twilight talking about Texas with Megatron, and Megatron's like, oh god. And Rarity has designs for her. <laughs> Sorry for him. Oh man, this, 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 this comic is just fun. And last but not least, Evan Stanley. Simple ponies in uh, Cybertron. Awesome wallpaper for your phone. Yay. There you go. <coughs> but anywho, um, with that, let's wrap up the comic. Final thoughts, Silver. Well, I thought this was a very fun introduction along with uh, an entertaining story featuring uh, couples that are studying contrasts. So I've always been a fan of opposites attract. So there you go. And well, like I say, Scootaloo... Looking adorable uh, in the Daniel outfit. <laughs> but, well, the funny thing is, RC is the only one of the second wave of Transformers, well, arguably third wave, that gets to feature in these. They don't want Ultra Magnus or Hot Rod, Cup or Springer uh, getting too involved. And I feel like that's based on the resistance to season three and later. Uh, other questions. Uh, why, why, why would you say RC is uh, second to almost third generation? Well, let's see. You have season one, which introduced sort of the, the starter Transformers. Then in season two, they either got a bunch of inexplicable additions or they made... Uh, new teams like the uh, like the aerial bots. Then the movie happens and they kill off a whole bunch of characters to make room for the new and to sell new toys. And that's when RC is introduced along with Hot Rod and Cup Wait, and Ultra Magnus and so on. RC is the movie. I thought yes. she was G one original. No, G one movie. Uh -uh. She was introduced in the G1 movie when Optimus died and Ironhide died and Wheeljack died and my childhood died. <laughs> hey, 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 that movie was awesome yeah. because they introduced Weird Al. Hey, I'm not saying it wasn't awesome, but you, there was not a dry in the house when Optimus Prime went, went out. Oh, man, like... Uh, Optimus Prime is safe. He's in a the three and a half inch floppy disk. <laughs> yeah, well, that was in the comics. It says something about his brain that he could be he could be stored on that much disc. Yep. <laughs> oh God. Uh, not not even seven discs, just one. <laughs> just one, and that's in the comics. But I tell you, Prime was the only one who had a guarantee of coming back. But we didn't know it at the time. That was back <laughs> when Optimus Prime dying could have been forever's. Oh yeah. So. RC gets gets featured because she's the most prominent female Autobot, mm -hmm. e even more than Windblade. But all the others, I feel like this series was always hesitant to touch. What do you mean? Most of the Transformers that the ponies interact with are from the early part of G1. No Galvatron, no Cyclonus, no... Uh, Sweeps or Scourge, no Rodimus Prime or any of those other Autobots. They want to keep that firmly in the early G1 space as much as possible. Yeah, Ultra Magnus is also one. Like, yeah, I, I get what you mean. <laughs> so, well, so I liked the characters of the third season. Sure, I, I missed Optimus Prime as a steady presence, but 
you know, I noticed there. I noticed that absence, and I feel that is very conscious choice. Mm. I I get what you mean. I get what you mean. And in all honesty, if we're just talking about Transformers here and how they should have done it, is that split the group, uh, split the group, tell a different story, and you can still have Optimus Prime kicking and living. And you can also introduce a new bad guy for the B team. I mean, Ultra Magnus could lead the crew and have his own adventure with his own bad guy. And yeah, I mean, that could work, right? It could. I, there are plenty of enemies to, from which to choose. Yeah, you got Killmonger. Killmonger or uh, how about Thunderclass? Yeah. You say yeah, but I don't think you know who I'm that is. I'm trying to remember. It's a plane, right? Yep. Actually, more. Uh... Oh no, it's Thunder, Thunder Wing. Wing. Yeah, yes, yeah, Thunder Wing. He's sort of this giant apocalypse transformer. Oh, oh, him! If I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh. Oh, him. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, he's kind of the odd one out of the Transformers. Like, they didn't really want to deal with him. Well, it's a weird little... It's a weird old thing. He's got a long history and, well, I would I would digress if I went yeah. into it. But anywho, like, like I mentioned before, you could just put him there as... The B team's bad guy. Maybe he has ambitions, trying to overthrow Meg uh, Megatron. Yeah, who knows? But right. either which way. But this this was a lot of fun, and I thoroughly enjoyed the the issue. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Jacob, what about you, man? Well, for the first story, it was fine. Uh, it was a good introduction for the new series. It just have a bit of a problem with Sombra. The the re the reason for Sombra's return is a bit iffy, honestly. Just... That being said, however, well, for the second story, it's the ending sweet and all, but uh, I have a problem with with, a, with it, and it's it starts with the title, a real mother. Why exactly is going on here? Yep, I I I, I get what you mean. The the title makes you ponder a lot. Like, why that title? And once you reach the end, you kind of get it, but not really, because none of them are murders. Yeah, but especially, if I feel irritated because, I mean, Scootaloo's parents were barely in stories after the reveal in the TV series. The only time they appeared was in the season 10 slice of life issue, and it, it was sweet seeing her aunts being supportive uh, to her and getting her to just be honest with her, pa with her parents about her not being into things of, uh, that they do for a living and they bond over other things. This, however, I don't know. I, I feel like school loose parents are being signed light, uh, signed light for well, this comparison with RC and uh, green light. True, and even when you really think about it, the bots that they are quote unquote taking care of, they're they're not really their children, especially Hot Rod. Like Hot Rod is. I'm I'm guessing the same age as RC, so yeah, he's he's just uh he's uh, again I think he's there as a chauffeur. Yeah, I, mean, I, I guess. But here's the thing: the message I'm getting from that chapter is that while they might not be the the biological mothers, they are the ones who care for and and protect them, so they are. It's always more mothers than the biological parents. I, yeah, but I still, I, I still feel it's kind of unfair in Scootaloo's case. I mean, yeah, sure, they've been away most of the time, but that's mostly because of the job. That doesn't mean they're like deadbeat parents or anything. But they're also not great parents. Well, I'm digging what Silver's saying also. I mean, 
yeah the the title is the how do I put this the title makes you think and uh whatever that makes you think is kind of cool but either which way anyway yeah, but anyway uh the the other uh hold on um well anyway the story is that sam uh Sam Max is writing for the NLP Transverse Crossover brings up another problem, but I'm gonna save that for when we review issue two on that. All right, all right, mm. all right. Promise of things to come. And as for me, I like this series. I I, I like this series from uh, the first uh, season to this one. It's really cool. You get to see a lot of ponies and uh, Autobots. I'm sorry, Transformers. And if you're a fan of Sorry, if you're a casual fan of Transformers, just looking at this is just awesome. You you, you you want to know more about those characters. Like, who is that uh, small minicon that loves reading comics? Um, he's what? <clears throat> Frenzy? Okay, you go to the wiki page and you open up like, and you ask, why is he not the same color and whatnot? And then you have Silver Quill just... Um, screaming in here saying that they got the wrong colors. Hey, it's Rumble! Rumble! <laughs> yeah, and for Sombra, I... Hmm, it's interesting. I would like it if it was T-Rex, but T-Rex is just all muscles and no brain. So having Sombra here kind of makes sense. So anywho... Uh, let's wrap this up. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thebitchonegmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account, <coughs> <coughs> the show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And also, please subscribe and read us. Uh, Silver, where can the good people find you? Or oh, many places. You can find me on Twitter, DeviantArt, and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill. And uh, you can also support me on Patreon or Kofi under the same MLP Silver Quill. I'll also be on Equestria Daily on Wednesdays, uh, posting a review if we have a new comic. And now that we have a semi regular rhythm once again with uh, uh, t- Make Your Mo- uh, No, Tell Your Tale that uh, I do Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight Comics. Awesome, awesome. I think there's one thing you forgot to mention, Silver. Well, after my After the Fact videos, which uh, you can find by searching on YouTube, but uh, make sure to uh, put in Silver Quill, otherwise you get this uh, informative news program, which is good, but not me. True, true. I was doing it first. No, not that. Your, your, your weekly... Sorry, uh, your... Daily puns. Ah, uh, yes, on my YouTube channel, you can get, you can get come in for a piping hot weekday <laughs> pun to give you that little extra oomph or ah uh, in the morning. Yep, yep. Those are fun. Those are fun to listen to. Like if you you if you got no idea how to pun, watching that series makes you knowledgeable in puns, and you could use it in everyday conversation in your games, and even in your D&D campaign. If you want to make people... Sorry, if you want to make the GM kill you fast, create puns. There we go. Or, could do, or you can do critical damage on the entire uh, party. <laughs> Emotional damage! That is also true. Anywho, Jacob, what about you, man? Uh, you can find me on DeviantArt <coughs> under the username Yakafon Torka, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Thermal Rising, you can find it on filmfishing.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check it out, guys. And also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on printoflive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you like support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion, podcast, exclusive, and deleted content, 
And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, Best of Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Queen. I'm Yakup. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of Yes Show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. <laughs>